One of the most significant things I've ever heard any kind of public official say, I think it was the first full day after that first report that we did, and there's a press conference with the man who was then the police commissioner, and he said something that to this day I remember everything about what he said and how he said it. He said, we're, we're looking, looking at, at that. that. We're looking at that, that we could have a serial killer. And it was something about the syntax and the way he phrased it. It, it. it was in response to somebody said, is this a serial killer? And to this day, so many years later, symbolizes, you know, the moment that it was clear that this was something enormous. I don't think it's a coincidence that four bodies ended up uh, in this area. When you're looking for one person and then you find three other remains, you know it's bigger than what you're covering at the time. And then we'd have these updates and they were typically on anniversaries or whatever. And I think it belies the dysfunction at the top of the police department at the time because they clearly didn't know whether it was one person or two people or three people. Anything is possible at this point because there's so many unanswered questions. There was a lot of speculation because it's still a remote area. Maybe more than one person used this as a dumping ground because it was that isolated, the weather conditions were that extreme out there. I don't want anybody to think that uh, we have a Jack the Ripper running around Suffolk County with uh, blood dripping from a knife. They told us all of those things over a course of many months. They said this is a serial killer. They say definitely the work of a serial killer. Then they said they think this is two serial killers. The killings may be the work of more than one person. This is not an episode of CSI. This is an intensive, long-term investigation that includes the use of sophisticated technology as well as good old-fashioned detective work. Then they said they think this is three serial killers. A short time ago, police said the bodies found dumped at several beaches are the work of at least three killers, not one. And what is now very clear is that the area in and around Gilgo Beach has been used to discard human remains for some period of time. And then again, they came back to one. But the theory is now that we're dealing with one serial killer. It's sort of the tragedy of this story is how incompetently managed this investigation was from the beginning. Suffolk County had never dealt with an investigation like this, and they were very clearly in over their heads. It is an enormously painstaking and a, a very protracted process to really get all the right information and be accurate about this. We have no idea whatsoever where, <laughs> that we're dealing with a serial killer. My initial feeling was, wow, this is going to be a huge story. And, you know, I had never found myself in the middle of a serial killer case before, and certainly not one that was just starting. I mean, you know, a lot of times you see these cases that go on forever and maybe you'll find yourself covering a little bit of it. And there are these notorious killers or, you know, that they think they, they're on the hunt for and it goes on forever. And on day one, the very first time, the top cop at the time uttered the words serial killer. And right there, I mean, you knew this was a momentous story and this was gonna be one that we're gonna be dealing with for a very long time. Gilgo Beach became like, it became the Gilgo serial killer. But Gilgo Beach actually was only kind of near where this happened. It was sort of the closest small village. But it really gave Gilgo Beach as a community a really terrible, terrifying name. There are people who do live there year round. And now they're known around the world as this like town of horrors. In a place like this, people say, uh, hey, do you have uh, a dozen eggs? Because I can't get to the store because it closed the Ocean Parkway again. Such is life for the handful of people who call Gilgo Beach home. Many of them moved here decades ago for the anonymity, only to see their village become an international symbol of evil. I have to tell you, I thought, how astonishing that they brought up Gilgo Beach. It used to be that no one had any idea where I lived, and now everybody says, oh, I know Gilgo Beach, it's that spot. It, it really is, it's the Long Island serial killer, or the Ocean Parkway serial killer case. Gilgo Beach, it just sort of became the shorthand for this. It's a little bit unnerving. I'm hoping that they don't find anything else, and obviously I'm hoping that they find whoever did this very quickly. It was clear that there was nothing else that anyone cared about on Long Island for, I don't know, more than a year. It was the story we came back to. It was the location that we kept, you know, standing in, in the wind at all times of the year as there were new developments with this story. You start to get concerned about uh, this wonderful area that we live in. Maybe it is somebody who could live in this area 
and that you really have to be a little bit more careful. The search continues for Shannon Gilbert, the missing prostitute whose disappearance led to all these discoveries in the first place. No one knew anything about Shannon Gilbert. None of us had ever heard of her. As for the missing woman they were looking for in the first place, she is 24-year-old Shannon Gilbert. Gilbert was a 24-year-old prostitute who investigators say was last seen in May. Shannon Gilbert's family tonight telling Eyewitness News she was last seen in the area where those bodies were discovered. She was believed to have sold herself for sex on Craigslist. Police say they have no idea, quite frankly, if she might be one of the bodies they found. It could be weeks or months before we identify uh, the four people that were, were found over the last uh, few days. She had disappeared six months earlier, and the police didn't do much with it, and it sort of was festering in their missing persons division or, or wherever it was. It was not something that it, they'd ever told us about. We all became acquainted with Shannon Gilbert very quickly when the police explained how they found these bodies, that a, a, a police officer and his dog were looking in the area that Shannon Gilbert was known to have disappeared. A cadaver dog searching this nearby stretch of brush led officers to the skeletal remains of a woman's body. Two days later, cops returned and found three more, all of them dumped in the thick brush. And so then we met Mary Gilbert, Shannon's mom. The grief-stricken mother and sister of Shannon Gilbert went through old photos of the 24-year-old in their Ellenville, New York apartment today as detectives try to determine if the missing woman is one of the victims of what may be a serial killer. Her last phone call was 23 minutes to 911. The police missed her by five minutes. Shannon's mom became this tireless advocate for her daughter and for all the women in this case. I'm worried about if she suffered. Gilbert's family says on that night, Shannon met with a man she met on Craigslist at the beach in Long Island. They say police have talked to the man and he has taken a lie detector test. Despite her lifestyle, the family says the Shannon they remember was filled with love and promise. But there was this big question, is one of those four women Shannon Gilbert? Police refused to discuss leads in the case or if any of the bodies might be those of Shannon Gilbert or Megan Waterman, two prostitutes who disappeared in Suffolk County in May and June. Now the efforts continue to identify the women, but officials caution progress will be very slow. They tell us that it can take up to 30 days to have that examination complete. There was this momentous occasion every now and then where they'd gather all the press together and they'd make some announcement. And the announcement was always a big deal. We have a, a name on this person. We know more about this victim or that victim. But you always left feeling, you know, like you wanted more. Like, okay, well, that's just a detail that they just told us about. But what do they really know? What really happened here? And that's something I think that persisted throughout this investigation, that they were very, very tight with the information and not just with the public. And that, I think, to their detriment in the end, they were tight with this information with other agencies that could have helped them solve it sooner, potentially. So it, it was about three or four weeks later that we got the names of these poor women. That conclusion tonight from the medical examiner in Suffolk County, after identifying the remains of all four bodies found last month near each other on Gilgo Beach, Long Island. All four were women, all four were prostitutes. Those bodies now have names and faces and a common cause of death. We hear names. These poor women were real people who had real names and real families. What activities these victims may have engaged in prior to their murders does not matter. They were young women whose lives were cut tragically short. Maureen Brainerd Barnes was from Norwich, Connecticut. Melissa Bartholomew was from Buffalo, New York. Megan Waterman from Scarborough, Maine. And Amber Lynn Costello was from North Babylon on Long Island. Investigators say all four women were prostitutes who advertised their services on Craigslist, each of them vanishing sometime in the past four years. Police say the women, all in their 20s, were murdered elsewhere, dumped by their killer along the side of Ocean Parkway on this windswept section of Gilgo Beach. That opened up all new kind of lines of reporting and their families started talking. I convinced myself it wasn't after a week, you know, we didn't hear back from the DNA. I just said it's not her. They would have called us if it was her. It's sad. And I just wanted to get a chance to see where my sister was. Bartholomew vanished from the Bronx over a year and a half ago. Back in Buffalo, her family has endured a heartbreaking wait. They talked to a local news station in September of 09. If anybody has seen my daughter, please contact us. 
We really need her to come home to us. We all love her and miss her. It took my sister's life from me and my family's. I just can't believe it. I just can't believe it. And what became clear is there were real similarities among all these women. They had all come from backgrounds where they had some degree of trouble in their lives. They were all sort of running from something. And they had found a home in the sex trade in New York. The investigators told us at that press conference that this was the relationship among all four of these women. They were in a line of work that was extremely dangerous. The victims were engaged in a high-risk business and these homicides appear to us to be directly related to that business. I'll actually never forget the district attorney of Suffolk County used this as a chance to warn women not to do this because look what happened to these four. We don't know who did it, we don't know the details, but they're in a very, very dangerous line of work. People who are engaged in a similar business should be on very, very high alert. That was really the big announcement three, four weeks in. And what was stunning to everyone covering this case, that not one of those four bodies was linked to Shannon Gilbert. And so she was still missing. Last night, they definitively ruled out Gilbert as a match for any of those bodies. At the time, everyone assumed, I think probably the police as well, that her body was there somewhere. She had been murdered like the others because she also was a sex worker. It was hard to imagine that it wasn't linked, that she hadn't met the same fate as the other four. And so they kept searching. When I get the phone call from the police every time, my heart stops. You know, I'm always thinking, is this the call, is this the call? I'm frustrated because it's been such a long search. And then a few months later, they found a fifth body, also not Shannon. Investigators now confirm that a fifth body recovered this week is someone else. And then they found a sixth, a seventh, an eighth, a ninth. Still not Shannon. But while those first four women were identified as missing prostitutes, Gilbert was not one of them, and she's been ruled out as a match to the four additional bodies discovered in the past week. My daughter is still missing. We don't know where she is. It's connected, and I wish they would just do their job faster before any more girls get hurt.